Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's a request from one of the Hadith disciples after she saw the video on our fifth tutorial on wiping over the socks when performing wudu, whether it's leather socks, whether it's cotton socks, polyester socks, or whatever type of socks you have on. All right, these socks or leather socks. And we explained in that video and others as well that it's permissible to wipe over these type of socks. All right. Uh, it was a, a, a guy in Guyana uh, who objected to something that we didn't even mention, but he objected it to what he thought was said is that this and the delay for this was the khuf and we said that I'm Hanafi and so on and so forth. At the end of the day, the Imam, unfortunately, he was very confused. He didn't know what he was talking about. All right, but the point is, is that the correct view is that it is permissible to wipe over socks. All right. And it doesn't have to be a leather sock. And the delay for that is what we mentioned in that video, let alone common sense. Why did the Prophet sudden wipe over a leather sock? What was the purpose of the leather sock? What is the intention of the sock, the khuf, to protect the foot, to keep the foot warm, to keep the foot cool, to keep the foot from getting dust in it and sand in it and all types of harmful things, the same as a normal type of sock. All right, let alone the generality of the word khuf let alone the ahadith in which the Prophet ﷺ told the companions to wipe over the coverings. فَأَمْرَهُمْ بِالْمَسِي عَلَى الْعَصَائِبِ وَالْتَسَاخِينَ That's a long argument in itself. What's important is, in that video we explain uh, the proper way of wiping over the sock, whether it's a khuf or whether it's a cotton sock. We also did a video, a tutorial on wudu itself. How to properly make wudu. What are the bare necessities of the wudu. So uh, she said that she wanted us to do a video on the tayammum, how to properly perform the tayammum. And we say in brief, a tayammum is a very important act of worship. And it linguistically means to seek something out, to intend something. That's what the word tayammum linguistically means. As far as the legislative meaning, then it is to intend and to seek to intend and to seek uh, spiritual purification through dry means for the permissibility of prayer and anything else that you need to hard or for. It is an act of worship, to worship Allah by purifying yourself spiritually or even ritually through clean, dry matter. And the reason why you do this is to make something that is normally unlawful law for such as the salah such as the salah. Some of the people of knowledge say, if a person had physical impurities on his body and he didn't have any water to remove those physical impurities, he would what? Make the tayammum. So it's a spiritual intention and it will act as if ritual izalatul khabath, izalatul najasa, removing physical impurities. All right, and there are many other issues with regards to that. So that's a basic brief understanding of the term tayammum. As far as what are the conditions of tayammum, when is it permissible to use? Uh, when is it impermissible to use? In general, a tayammum is when you cannot make wudu. You cannot make a ghusl because you're sick, you're ill, the water is too cold, the weather is too cold. If you use the weather, you'll become uh, the water, you'll become sick. Or even if your recovery will be delayed. They say a delayed recovery is a means of tayammum being permissible. Some of the ulama mentioned if a person has fresh water and there's no other water to be used and a person will go thirsty and they can make tayammum. If a person will get lost from his entourage, his, the caravan. Rather, Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned that if a man was in a camp and he had to make a ghusl, he said that he could make the tayammum because of a wet dream so that people wouldn't think bad about him. What were you doing last night, Fulan? You wake up and everybody is going and you have to make a ghusl. Where were you at? What were you doing? The point is, whether that's correct or absolute or not, we're trying to prove the the yani, the times it was permissible to make tamil. When the water is said it's too cold, or the weather is too cold, a person is going to get sick, a person is going to get harmed. All right? As far as if it's a little brisk, and that's one thing. Okay, that's relative and that's 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 subjective. But as far as as far as if it is too cold. And you're going to get sick, you're going to get pneumonia, you're going to okay, you become very ill by using the water or your skin has a cut on it or stitches 
or bandages, and you cannot use the water. Any physical reason behind you not using the water for ghusl or wudu, then it is permissible to make the tayammum. It is what? It's permissible to make the tayammum. Or it may be an instance in which a person doesn't have water. All the water is off, there's no water. There's a drop for one reason or another. Or you're on the road traveling and there's no water to be found. The gas station is miles ahead. And this happens, especially in the 21st century. These are reasons behind what? A tayammum. You can't use the water. You don't have the water. The water is too expensive. Somebody's just selling a, it's uh, $20 for a bottle of water and things like this. So those are reasons why you make the TMO. As far as how to make the TMO, then we say the simple way of making the TMO is as follows, as as follows. And before we even get on how to make the TMO, what can you use for TMO? Is this sand here? Can you make TMO with this? Or does it have to be soil? Actual soil, actual black earth, dirt. Can a person use a seashell for TMO? Can a person use a stone or a rock for tayammum? Okay? Can a person use tree bark for tayammum? These are all issues over which the fuqaha and the ulama, they differ. They all differ on these issues, on the tayammum. Okay? So therefore, before we get into how to make the tayammum, we say, what do you use for the tayammum? Clear. Let's keep things simple now, and let's say we're going to use Anything that comes from Allah's earth, anything that is Sa'id, anything that is upon the face of the earth. So therefore, we said, first and foremost, is to hit the ground. Like that. And inshallah, the dust or the dirt will stay on your hands. And that's why some of the ulama say that it has to be actual Turab al harf It has to be farming soil, where it's kind of sticky. And for argument's sake, you hit the ground, Okay, and many of the ulama said you say you should, you should say Bismillah, and saying Bismillah to him is nothing but a branch, or a, uh, 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 it's a concept of saying Bismillah when you make wudu. Is it obligatory to say Bismillah before you perform wudu? And the correct opinion that it isn't obligatory. So therefore, what's obligatory and what's preferable two different things. So you strike the ground first of all with the intention in the heart. You strike the ground, wipe your what? face you don't have to scrub your face wipe your face like this and then atop your left hand and atop your right hand that is tamo you don't have to dig in your fingers rinse and wash none of that once again the intention in the heart you hit the ground you had a little bit of dust on your hands on the face once gently right hand left hand and that's it that's the correct proper way of making the tamo now some of the ulama they say that you should say Bismillah. Some of them say that the tayammum should be made. Uh, they say darbatani, one wiping for the face, one wiping for the hands. Some say up to the elbows, even up to the armpits. That's all weak. That's all weak. None of that is authentic. None of that is mandatory. The sunnah, the hadith, okay, uh, that are in the uh, authentic narrations, talk about the face and the hands. And that's it. There's no mandatory supplication afterwards. Etc. Then there are many other fifth issues that pertain to the TMOM, such as how long do you keep the TMOM? If you get water, does the TMOM become broken? How many salats can you make with the TMOM? Can you pray in Dhuha time, Asr time, Maghra time, or one TMOM? Etc. If a woman uh, leaves her menses and there's no water for her to wash, okay, obviously the sea is different, but if a person didn't have water behind him, didn't have the proper means of, of making a ghusl, can, can she be intimate with her husband with TMOM? And there are many, many, as we said, thick issues, furu'at, subsidiary issues of a tayammum. That's the basic, simple tutorial of tayammum. Once again, hit the ground with the intention, like this, gently on the face, gently on the right hand, gently on the left hand. And notice how I wipe my face first before my hands. And show Allah that's the proper, easy, sunnah way of making the tayammum with many other beneficial points on fiqh. So regardless whether they agree on those points or differ over those points, hopefully this video is a benefit and any other requests, disciples or disciples with regards to fiqh tutorials, they were more than willing to serve you and to teach you with the little that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.